Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So today, just like the thumbnail and title suggests, looks like the CPI data is out and it did not hit expectations. So unfortunately, uh, these things happen. And it's uh, something that we talked about yesterday. Now, everybody was very excited yesterday. We were very bullish and that's fine. I'm still very, I'm still quite bullish, but uh, these things happen. And you have to understand that nothing goes in a straight line. So these are the days that we have to sit back and take account of our portfolio and say, well, is this the end of the world? Whatever it is, 1%, 2% down, 3.5%, altcoins maybe 10% down? No, not really. But it's something to think about, something to remember of why we're talking about taking profits along the way. Now, some people would say, like, this is the most horrible time to take profits because, Rob, tomorrow things will be different. And a week from now, it'll be great. And then six months from now, it'll be great. That's true. That's all true, as a matter of fact. And of course, I've been talking about how lump summing and getting into uh, the markets is a pretty good time be anytime before the halving. However, when I talk about taking profits, I'm just talking about small little pieces. So like, don't forget what it's like, because at some point, we got to blow off top. You're going to have to sell at some point. So don't let that uh, sell muscle atrophy and waste away. So today, CPI number come out and uh, we're at 3.1%, estimated 2.9. Core CPI was 3.9, estimated 3.7. Boring stuff. But it uh, is essentially what moves the markets, little bits here and there. So we'll get to uh, some, some more bullish stuff in a bit, but we have to have balance. This was a great piece from Barron's. Inflation rose by bigger than expected 3.1% in January. Here's what we have. So the latest reading of the CPI released today at 8.30 in the morning showed the annual rate of inflation dropped less than expected to 3.1%. So here's the thing, you have to remember this, everybody, is that uh, we are dropping as far as inflation goes. The Fed is doing its job. I know everybody hates them, but uh, hey, they're doing their best for <laughs> the actual tools that they have. It just isn't really dropping fast enough, as they say. So this is all based on economists who were surveyed by the fact set, expected last month's price growth to come in at 2.9%. So essentially, the reason you're telling me, and this is the truth, the reason why the market is uh, taking a, a little pullback is because some eggheads, economists, are out there going, yeah, we think 2.9, and it came in at 3.1%. And that's why we're down two to three, 10% in some different situations in our market. Unbelievable. That's the market. Welcome to it. Core CPI, generally considered a better gauge of underlying trends because you can strip out energy and food prices. It rose by 3.9%, which is the same pace seen in December, but yet again above the 3.7% economists forecasted. And what was this dire prediction? And what did this do to the markets? Wah, wah. So we hit 50,000 yesterday. Now we're down almost 1,500 bucks, 14, 1,300 and something, you know, correct me in the comment section. And this is one of those things. This is going to happen. Nothing goes in a straight line. Let's just take a look. I'm just curious to see how everything else did. <clears throat> Coincidentally, uh, Ethereum is up 2.6% in 24 hours. That's pretty good. Solana, <clears throat> Lido Stake, that's the same thing. <clears throat> 1.8%, 3.6. Let's see, any big losers? Bitcoin Cash, 5.6. That's pretty big. Immutable, 3.9, and then across the board. So, you know, you're going to get those four, six percent, but some are doing pretty well. Six percent up for Mantle, <laughs> five percent for Render, Multiverse up two, four and a half percent for Ordies, for Ordinals. You know, now that I'm looking at this, quite honestly, it's the same thing we talked about yesterday, right? We talked about how, you know, when we see people take you know, Bitcoin pumps first, people sell Bitcoin, they get into high cap alts, then they get into low cap alts. And then, of course, along the way, they sell and they go back into Bitcoin. So this is actually nothing different than what you're used to, or what we're used to. And you can see that money is kind of flowing in that direction. Now, over the last hour, you can see a little bit of a pullback. But I mean, look, even, geez, Louise, uh, Mantle staked Ether. Okay. Helium's up 4%. So again, this isn't the, the worst thing that could actually happen, but what's going to happen in the future? Well, I can't predict that, but I can tell you that as far as the FOMC meetings coming out and from what uh, rate hikes are looking to be, it looks like we are right now at the, the target rate are at 525 to 550 basis points and BIPs. And in the next meeting, which is on 20th of March, 2024, man, it's like a month away. Uh, the chances of it being cut 
rate cuts happening. Somebody believes that's actually going to happen. I don't see who those people are, but sure. Eight and a half percent, 91% say no. Uh, also, the 1st of May, over 61% say we will not cut rates. And of course, we'll go to the next meeting, which is in June. And in June is when people are thinking over 50% that we will cut rates. What does that mean? Well, it means it's good for the economy. But uh, again, when they start cutting rates, I mean, it's good for the markets. But uh, that means that there is a recession on the horizon. I'm not one to predict that, but that's just what it is. So that's what is going on in the macro environment. That's part of the reason why you see a little bit of a dip in the market. I personally believe it's different people who are taking profits along the way and rolling those into alts and just kind of blaming this on the macro environment. However, there is something else that I find I found very interesting today as far as governments doing governmental stupid things. This is uh, from James Van Stratton. He's a lead analyst over at Crypto Slate. And this is, I guess, going out to uh, customers in, in the UK and Kraken for Kraken. If you are a customer in the UK uh, of Kraken, please verify this because you know, it's always good to get a second opinion. But here's what we got. This is quite concerning. Hello, blank person. Regulations in the UK require that we maintain up-to-date information about our clients and their account activity regarding self-custody wallets. You know what those are. Those are the Ellie Pals. Those are the Ledgers. Those are the Tangents. Those are the MetaMasks. Those are Titus. Those are Phantom wallets. Those are all the things that are self-custody wallets where you manage your private keys. Please reply to this email and answer the following questions. Please confirm that you are or are in control of this self-custodial wallet that you are sending and receiving from. If you do not own or control the self-custodial wallets that you are sending, please detail which addresses these are, who the owner or controller is, and provide their residential address. <laughs> That's a ballsy move. So right now, a lot of you are just shouting at the screen going, good luck. I'm not going to give them that information. You don't have to if you're in the UK, obviously. I think this could actually go global. I think this could actually happen. What would happen if this doesn't actually go through and you say, you know what? Good luck. I'm not going to give you that information. Well, here's what they could do. After you reply, our support team will make sure to clarify any questions you have. If we do not receive a response by February 23rd, we will have to place a lock on your account until we obtain the information we requested. Thanks for your cooperation and have a great day, essentially. So what this means is this. You're either going to give them the information or they're going to shut you out of Kraken. And that is just a centralized exchange type of thing. Now, moving forward, that could also happen with Binance. If you don't remember, uh, the U.S. government essentially didn't take down Binance, but they did take down CZ and they had him in the, in the courthouse. And they essentially pled guilty to AML and KYC mishandlings. And uh, actually his hearing or his sentencing was pushed back later. So right now the U.S. government does have their tentacles in that. I see a problem coming in for self-custodial wallets. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Centralized exchanges are not the solution. DEXs are the solution. Now, on and off ramps, it's anybody's guess. Very hard to shut down everything. I do think that when you do these things in these countries, it just creates a pocket. And then it creates a vacuum for the other countries who are above and beyond and say, okay, we get the value added proposition for Bitcoin and crypto and digital assets. So if you're gonna do that over there, UK, we're gonna let our other customers do this thing and we're gonna allow you guys to do any kind of trading and buying and selling of your different assets that you have and come this way. So UK can do that, America can do that, Canada can do that, have fun. But in the end, it's really gonna come down to the people that are gonna decide what they want to do and where they want to go. Good luck governments, best at you. Anyhow, let me show you think about that in the comment section. So we talked about some somewhat negative things and kind of dis disproved them. Now let's go into a little bit of craziness. Um, I don't like to do these things too much uh, as far as price predictions, but it was quite appealing and I thought it would be relevant today as we talk about the negativity. Bitcoin all-time highs. So this was a good article from Cointelegraph. Bitcoin OG who called 2021 all-time high sees 600K Bitcoin price by 2026. Let me say that again and try, try not to cough too hard. Bitcoin OG who called 2021 all-time high sees a 600,000 Bitcoin price by 2026. Before we go on, I'm not saying that Bitcoin's gonna hit a 600K. I think it will appreciate. 
I think it's going to be somewhere. My price prediction is this. Bitcoin will be somewhere between $5 and $500,000. Somewhere in that area is where Bitcoin will be. I learned my lesson in doing price predictions. I think they're uh, ridiculous. Uh, but the factors behind them are quite compelling. So who is this uh, masked OG? This is Tur Demeester. Nailed it. Uh, he's reports that uh, Adam and Research, he's on the board of uh, uh, the Texas Bitcoin Found, or TX Bitcoin Found, I should say, not Texas. Blockstream, Unchained.com, and Anchor Watch. And uh, he's been in the crypto digital asset, mostly Bitcoin space, for quite some time. And this was the article they're referencing. And I read when I first read this article, I'm like, was this today? Because he says, uh, Tur Demeester says Bitcoin price above 50K, not insane at all. And I'm like, this is, I thought this is what we're talking what do we just 50k yesterday? But no, it's May 19th, 2020. And before everybody starts to starts to scoff and laugh, let me remind you around this time of what was happening. So here's what he says. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Let me go over here. This was on May 19th, 2020. You know what the price was back in May 19th of 2020? It was $9,760. And this was right after the Cerveza sickness and around March 15th or 16th, when we hit, when we were flying high at 10,000 on February, which was right about now in the four year cycle time and plunged all the way to five grand. Imagine losing 50% in what? A day, two weeks. Yeah, that's not fun, but that's the market. So he's over here and he's like, yeah, I could see 50K, maybe do 100K, but that's it. So here's what the article stated. He says, I think a price target of like 50K is not insane at all. I would even say between 50 to 100K. And that's for this piece. And he put out a nice little parts uh, as far as TA, accumulation, reaccumulation. 12 months ago, Bitcoin break, broke out of his accumulation phase. Reaccumulation started to break out of this band. Well, like nine other parabolic, ra parabolic rally. So that was his call for that cycle. And I'll be damned if he wasn't correct. And remind, I will remind you, remember in 2021, we had everybody, even myself, thinking that 100K was pretty low. I thought at least 150K, at least. And I was wrong. Everybody else was wrong. So I like to hear these articles about people who, who got it right and what they think is happening right now. But it seems kind of far-fetched, 600K. But wait, it gets better. Demetra says, the reason is because Bitcoin will react to trillions of dollars in bailouts. He said, I'm targeting 200 to 600K by 2026, fueled by trillions in global bailouts and stimulus. Will Beaumont says, uh, what kind of bill are you talking about? He goes, and Tur says this, of banks and governments. For example, U.S. government today is already spending more on interest payments than on the military. And that's true. We like to print money. We like to give out bonds and have different countries invest into us in our debt. And of course, unfortunately, we have way too much interest to pay on that. And he says the only way to keep this going, this Ponzi scheme, well, he didn't say that. I said it. Only one way to keep this going is to print an ocean of money. And I will remind you, what happened when they print an ocean of money was right back here in March 15th of 2020. The Treasury came out with the Fed and said, we are going to enlighten everybody and turn on the money printers for quantitative easing. And we won't stop until we hit an equilibrium. And they started that right here, and we went all the way here and all the way to here and then here. And we printed like crazy. And that was before we had all of this monstrous debt that we have to service. So when Tur says here, bailouts, and there was a great video by Guy at, at uh, Coin Bureau where he talked about bailouts and the World Economic Forum and the central banks and what they're trying to do, not bailouts, but bail-ins. When I saw this, I'm like, this could happen. Now, does that mean 600K? No, but there is something to be said for that. And lastly, before we get out of here and we'll do a little q and I just want to remind everybody that there are other cryptos besides Bitcoin, like Ethereum. <laughs> I know it's not a sexy thing, but just be aware that uh, when we're taking a look at this, it was quite interesting, right? When we talked about the alts, Ethereum being the top alt, uh, it's up 2.6% in 24 hours, even though Bitcoin took a tumble. Why? Well, part of that is that Franklin Templeton just joins the race to launch a spot Ether ETF. 
Other issues such as ARC and BlackRock submitted their S1s for the potential funds at the end of last year. Franklin's also interested in staking the ETH held by the proposed fund. And a decision on the spot ETH ETFs is expected in May. And also Hester Pierce, uh, crypto mom is there, as she is called, for the SEC, has stated that when they are taking a look at these ETFs, they're going to go by precedent for what happened previously for the Bitcoin ETF and apply that to other ETFs for other cryptos and digital assets. And ETH is on the block. So we'll see if that gets approved. And that could be one of the reasons why things are going pretty well for Ethereum. Now, me personally, I think if you've been here for quite some time, um, you probably understand that there's maybe some other opportunities out there. I can't tell you what those are. I'm not a financial advisor or your dad. But uh, I think traditional markets are looking at Ethereum and going, yeah, let's get into that. But I think some of us might know something else beyond Ethereum. And I think we're going to front run them just like we front ran them with Bitcoin, just like we're going to front run them with Ethereum and moving forward. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, especially moving so fast into the halving April 20th.